Hello everyone, welcome to our next list. We are from Epi Tutunan Safi. The group members are Nur Ijana Nadira Binti Isha, I Nur Nazri Najiha Binti Sapri, and Putra Nur Adib Aiman. We choose the topic Retaining Wall. There are some sub topics that we will present, so let's proceed with the definition of Retaining Wall. A retaining wall is a design of a structure. It is built when there is a desired change in ground elevation and to resist the lateral pressure of the soil that exceeds the repose angle of the soil. At two different levels on two sides supporting soil literally, retaining walls are used, where the soil is the slope and the ground can resist naturally there. The retaining wall is constructed to resist the soil. The pressure on the wall design value. It is important to have proper drainage behind the wall at the limit. In retaining walls to improve the stability of the material behind the wall, the drainage material will reduce or remove the hydrostatic pressure. Careful planning is the key to a successful wall project. Follow the guidelines to ensure the walls you build will stand the test of time. Start by determining the overall purpose of your project. Are you trying to create more usable space, solve a drainage problem, or simply add curb appeal? Once you have your wish list, you can determine if, where, and how you will build it. Sketch out the position of the walls on a scale diagram, taking the necessary measurements are needed. Next, check building cuts and talk with utility companies. An approved wall design may be needed to get a building permit to build was about a certain height. Call the local utility companies before you need to have them mark the location of the utilities lines. For safety reasons, it will also need to contact utility companies to have them check for underground cables before start digging. Third, identify soil types and water drainage. Granular soils which have a sandy field are great for building on, as they allow for good water drainage. Clear soils stick together and place pressure on the walls. Organic soils will also stick together but they should only be used on top of the walls for planting areas. If the site does not have the proper soil needed to build on, it may need to bring in new soils to ensure the structural integrity of your retaining wall. Water management is an incredibly important aspect of planning out a retaining wall, as poor water management is the number one reason for retaining wall failure. There are two factors to consider, surface runoff and in-wall drainage. Lastly, plan out the necessary size and placement of each retaining wall. The layout of site will determine where you need to place retaining walls and also how tall each wall needs to be. Factors such as a lens lob, setback and surcharge will help determine whether you will build gravity walls or reinforced walls. Retaining wall construction process. There are many ways and methods of building a retaining wall. It all depends on the retaining wall type. The video will show you the construction of a concrete retaining wall.
we will take a look at some of the most common build materials of a retaining wall. Concrete blocks are very modern and sophisticated material because it is an artificial produce. Concrete offers a lot of flexibility and variety to choose from. Concrete blocks walls are usually much easier to install than some other, more labor demanding block types. Natural stone, it is retaining all the good qualities of other types of stone while allowing you much more design options than for instance all the pieces. Natural stone is flexible, it can fit almost any situation. Also, if it does not need any special connection or motor to keep the construction together. Gabion is also a very old and traditional method of building the retaining walls. They are simple catch made out of steel rod or wires and filled with rock or stone or rubber. Gabions are flexible materials and ideal for retaining walls. On one end, they look natural and beautiful, and on the other end, they are being flexible and they do not suffer much stress. Hence, the stress due to horizontal or vertical movement of soil do not cause substantial settlement or sliding. Brick is one of the most popular building materials and it is very easy to deal with as well. Bricks give a very warm and inviting look, and than that, it is a relatively low maintenance building material. Bricks are playing extremely well with their elements. They are not damaged by dampness, and they can withstand a lot of abuse caused by flying debris. Also, bricks are not combustible and do not help the spread of fire. The ability of the concrete to support the soil lot depends on weather conditions and other elements. Since it features much bigger density than block spots, the walls built out of poured concrete are much stronger as a result. Poured concrete nice incorporating other architecture elements like, for instance, the next system is very easy. Wooden retaining walls are very easy to install, which makes them an ideal DIY landscaping project. Although reasonably durable, wood is a very lightweight material that is easy to dismantle, move around, and repurpose. I am Nur Iziana Dira binti Isha. So, I will cover the benefit of retaining structure, causes of retaining structures problem, and retaining structure remediation methods. Benefits of retaining structure First, protective structure. Retaining walls are used to counteract the force of gravity to protect the structure. In other words, they are used to hold the soil. Second, functional production. Retaining walls serve as a functional production to prevent sinkhole from destroying the landscape structure. They are used to stabilize the sloping landscape and provide level surface on slope. Third, Base round of solution. If the property is not prevented from infiltrating, then rainwater runoff can ultimately damage the land. This can protect the landscape design, also prevent flood from inflowing the area. Fourth, reduce maintenance. Retaining walls can protect the landscape design and help in the long run. As a protective feature, it reduces maintenance and prevent erosion. Lastly, decorative feature. Retaining walls additionally give the landscape an aesthetically pleasing design. Next, causes of retaining structure problems. First, steel reinforcement is not in the right position. If the stem shows excessive deflection or cracking, the reinforcement size, depth, and spacing should be verified. Cases have occurred where the reinforcement was placed on the wrong side of the wall. When the actual reinforcement amount and location are determined, a designer can determine actual design capacity and remedial measure. Second, saturated backfill. If groundwater is allowed to accumulate in the backfill, the backfill becomes saturated. 
pour back fill material containing clay and swell and increase pressure on the wall. Third, clog drainage hole. Drainage hole do not leak water because they become clogged when there is no filter layer. Fourth, design mistake. Design mistake happen because of insufficient or wrong information. For example, the design of a retaining wall that retain a smaller height than the mat. An anticipated lot on retaining structure can occur. Fifth, detailing errors. Detail not confirming to the design must be avoided. A big source of problem is reinforcement placement. In example, steel rebar on the wrong side of the wall stem or insufficient extension into the wall stem. Lastly, foundation problems. Foundation problems usually happen when there is no ground investigation. Often ground investigation is not provided and the designer should be aware of any adverse condition. Retaining structure remediation method. The first one is correction of surface drainage. If it is uneconomical to replace the backfill or get to the base of the wall drainage system, then the solution can be regraded at the surface so water does not collect behind the wall. Additional drainage holes can also be cut through the wall. Next, reduction of the retained height. If the soil pressure needs to be reduced, regrading the surface can reduce the height of retain earth. Thirdly, usage of Tybex. If the wall stem is overstressed, one option is to use Tybex extending beyond the failure plan. Often the solution is drilling holes through the wall and insulation of anchor. Tybex at the surface can be used with a concrete anchor block. Using tiebacks require requires recalculating the wall internal force due to the change static system. Fourthly, extension of the footing. The toe of the footing can be extended to reduce the soil pressure, to transfer shear and moment at the connection of existing and new part of footings. Holes in the existing footing must be drilled and anchor installed. It is helpful in maintaining lateral stability by excavating in front of the footing in longitudinal increment. Next, removal and replacement of the backfill material. This may be the only solution if saturated backfill is the problem and cannot be controlled at the surface. The usage of crushed rock or gravel backfill is recommended. Lastly, Reinforcement on the front of the wall. This can be done by placing concrete to thicken the base and tapering to a height where the added strength is no longer needed. This is on the compression side. So, the only design concern is shear transfer at the interface, which rear pins can accomplish. For safety and health aspect in retaining structure, for excavation works, to ensure the wall remains straight, base concrete need to be installed to reduce the moisture that exists underneath the retaining wall. For footing, installation of footing can ensure the maximum strength and stability. Structure that support earth or adjoining should not demolish until the adjoining of the structure has been underpinned or braced. Temporary sheets piling shall not remove until the wall develop full strength. Installation process need to be well planned properly to ensure the integrity, durability and serviceability of structure. To ensure the sustainable retaining structure, three items or aspects need to be considered. That is location, soil and design. For location, Understand the property lines in detail and above and underground utilities include stormwater management system and irrigation during selecting the location of retaining wall. For soil, examine the soil condition to ensure the actual strength of soil for foundation or base. 
Lastly, for design, in designing retaining wall, all aspects need to be calculated such as wall height, footprint size, slopes, and angle of setback. Guideline for retaining structure First, crack and damage. Make sure there is no crack, damage, and spoiling of wall concrete surface. Second, joint filler and gaps. Make sure there is no missing deterioration joint filler and sealant. At the gap between facing panel, it must be free from undesirable vegetation growth. Third, functionally, must be no sign of distress, settlement and tension crack, deformation, tilting and bulging at the wall. Lastly, for finishing, free from visual exposure of groups of coarse aggregates resulting from growth leakage, vegetation growth, debris from defense measure, exposed rebar, and dislocation of masonry block.